All right, well, let's get started. I want to welcome everyone to our training today on filing the 3X and the Form 3. The way we're going to run this webinar today is that we'll start with the 3X and that will run about 30 minutes and then I will talk about the generating the Form 3 and that will also run about three, 30 minutes. So if you are a PAC and or party filer and you are submitting a 3x to the FEC, the first 30 minutes will be pertinent to you. If you are a candidate committee and you are submitting the Form 3 to the FEC, the second portion will be pertinent to you. Uh, if you are a Form 3 filer and just want to come back at 10.30 Pacific time, that is totally fine. We'll go over some similar information for, for both. So getting started for filers that are submitting a 3X, uh, we are going to start by taking a look at how you create a filing committee. Then I will show you how to add affiliations to that filing committee, so your treasurer, that sort of thing, maybe if you have a joint fundraising committee. Then we'll take a look at actually generating the 3X with the criteria that's required. and We'll go through the e-filing process, and then we'll take a look at a few utilities uh, that are available to you. So to get started, when you need to create a filer committee, both the support department here at Complete Campaigns and you needs to be involved. So here's what happens. You'll start by creating your committee record. So we'll go to Add Search, Organization. And I'm going to search for a committee record called FEC Party 3, whoops, 3X. I'm going to click search. And that doesn't exist yet, so I'm just going to choose to add a new organizational record. So we can see that FEC Party 3X is filled in the name, and one of the keys to doing this is that I'm going to check this committee box. This is going to allow me to enter my FEC ID number, so for our purposes I'm just going to say it's C111111. This is a number that you've received from the FEC. And we are going to set this up as a party committee, so we'll set that in the type drop down. Now I'm going to save my changes, and we have our committee that's actually set up. At this point, support needs to get involved, because you do have a record in your database now, and you have designated it as a committee, you have your FEC committee ID number entered, but it's still not a filing committee. So what you need to do is either give us a call at 888 217-9600, or you can send us an email to support at completecampaigns.com, and just let us know that you need this record set up as your filing committee, and we'll be able to set that up on the back end for you. So that's where support comes involved. So after we have actually set this up as a committee for you, your record will look a little something like this. I actually have one that's already set up been set up on the back side, so we'll do just FEC party. So this is the committee I've already set up on my side uh, to be a filer committee, and you'll notice that we now have this little piece of information, primary filing committee information, and we can't unselect the committee box anymore. This is a committee. Uh, you can, however, make this record inactive if you ever needed to. So now that your committee is set up as a filing committee, you probably want to start adding some affiliations. You'll see that I've already added John Smith as my treasurer, but maybe I need to add a, uh, well, let's take a look and see what, what else we can add here. Maybe I want to add an assistant treasurer. 
I should be in this database. I'm going to choose to save and set myself as the assistant treasurer. So now you'll see that we have uh, two treasurers listed on here. So there's some different options that you have as far as adding your affiliations. Um, you'll see that you could affiliate a bank record. You also can affiliate a joint fundraising committee if you have that type of record. But all of these affiliations occur through this affiliations drop down. So now our filing committee is set up. We have our treasurer. We also have an assistant treasurer associated with this record. And as you know, you need to actually call support to have us set this up as an official filing committee. So let's take a look at how you would actually generate a 3x. What we're going to do is just go to reports and choose government reports from this drop. Drop down. I have a few different filing committees set up here, so if you are a 3x only filer, this is what you would see. You wouldn't see this Form 3 information is what I'm trying to say. So what I am going to do is select Form 3x from this option, or from that menu. Now, you'll notice that there are a couple different places within back office where you can see an option that says install viewer. This is actually the FEC viewer and this is how you can view your report after it's generated. If you don't have this installed, you're not going to be able to view the report. So if you want to install it from this screen, you certainly can do that. One thing to note is that the FEC has not created a viewer that works with Macs. So unless you have some type of uh, PC virtual environment on your Mac, this viewer won't work. And again, this is a piece of FEC software, and they ju it just doesn't work with, uh, with a Mac at this point. So uh, you'll need a PC or a virtual PC environment. All right, so now we are looking at our report criteria page for the 3x. You'll see that your first piece of criteria is the report type. You have a lot of different options that you can select from here. Uh, you'll know from the FEC what report it is that you are supposed to be filing. So for us, let's choose the February 20th monthly. The next option you'll see is an option for sort. This is how you want records that are itemizing on your report to sort. The FEC actually doesn't care. Uh, you can do it in a random order by date or by name. Honestly, this is to help you be able to review your report in an easy manner. So whichever is easiest for you, just choose that option. Perhaps date is the easiest way for you to review your report. Then we have an option where we can select change of address. There is a change of address box on the first page of your 3x. So if this box is checked, the box on the actual 3x will be checked. And then you have an option to check whether or not this is an amendment. And you just do that right there. So I'm going to unselect both of those. We then have an optional memo field. This is not what is typically called the Form 99 or a memo text report. That is a separate report that you can submit to the FEC. This is just some optional text that you can submit to the FEC. It's going to show up actually on the second page of your report. So I will just type in here optional memo so that we can see where that shows up once I generate this. On the right hand column we have the area where we're going to enter our report dates. So you'll enter your from and your to. Uh, for my February 20th let's do 1-1-11 one, one, to one thirty one eleven. Note that you also have fields for election date and election state. These are going to show up if you are filing a 
like a post general report, that's when you'll see this information actually pull on your 3x. Now we have some report options that we can select. Um, you can choose any of these or not choose these as the case may be. It's really up to you. You'll notice that all of these have tool tips associated with them. So if you have any questions about what these options will do for you, obviously definitely call us or email us with questions for further information, but keep in mind that there are some tool tips that are available for you here. So I'm just going to toggle a couple of these on. Maybe I want to suppress my name titles so that uh, Mr. or Ms. doesn't show up on there. Um, one thing that you can do is itemize all your earmarked contributions. So this will bypass any uh, threshold rules that might be coming into play. Now, on the right, again, we have summary page calculations. I just first want to point out this option for previous column B amounts where it specifically calls out 11AI. You need to set this. So this is what back office uses to calculate your column B amount for 11AI. So you'll need to update this for each report that you file, this will be whatever your column B amount was for your previous report that was submitted. One thing to note is that back office is smart enough to know that for 3x filers, uh, your, your election calculation or your calculations for column B, sorry, are starting over at the beginning of the year. So even if you did have something in here, back office will make the assumption that it's actually supposed to be zero for the date starting 1, 1, 11. Now in calculation method, we have a few different options here. The first you'll see is auto calculate as possible. In other words, back office, please pull my numbers based on what's been entered in the back office database. You also have an option to override your cash on hand. You'll see that you need to enter your January 1st of the current year cash on hand, as well as the beginning of the period cash on hand. So you'll see both of those there. You definitely want to enter both pieces of that information. After that, we have an option where you can actually choose to dictate this information from a starting date. So maybe your starting date is going to be 1-1-2003, and then you can indicate the starting cash at that date. And then override column B actually allows you to just simply override your column B totals. And you can see you can add all of that information here. We are going to choose auto calculate as possible. And again, as with everything, if you have any questions about that, please let us know. So again, we're going to choose auto calculate as possible. Oh, one thing, sorry, that you'll notice in the report options uh, that is a relatively new field for party filers is this option for the federal percentage. This is going to impact H1 generation. If you do not need an H1 to generate, leave this at none. If you do need your H1 generated, what you'll do is just choose the percentage from this drop-down and back office will generate the H1 with the percent that you've selected here. Uh, for people that are party filers on the line, please just be aware that your interface for this looks a little bit different. You have an option to enter different percentages for GOTV, for example, uh, when you are indicating the H1 designations. We uh, have changed this actually because there's a relatively new ruling that uh, from the FEC where PACs are going to need to generate their H1 each time they generate a report. For party filers, that's not applicable to you. You're still generating the H1 uh, as far as we've been told by the FEC for the first report of the year 
on which you have an allocable disbursement. So for example, ours would be for a February 20th monthly. So you would set that there. And then you enter your treasurer's signature here. So let's just say that I am our treasurer. So I'll enter that information here. And now I'm going to generate my report. And you'll see that at the top and the bottom of the screen, we have the option to generate the report. So back office is thinking and going through the system to find transactions that should be applied to this particular report. And now we are at a screen where we can do a few different things. Uh, first of all, we can download our report if we wanted to view it. So I clicked download, and now I have an option to open this. So here is my report. Notice that this is where change of address would be indicated if we had selected that option on the report criteria screen. Our pre-election and post-election will be the areas where we would see the election date and the state if we had entered that information. But for our purposes, we can see here that we are actually filing the February 20th report. And we can also see that this report is new rather than amended. So that is the look of our report. I'm going to close this and minimize it for right now. Our other options here are to e-file. We can also choose redo, which is actually going to just take you back to the uh, criteria page so that you can re-enter dates if you realize that, that you had entered the wrong date. The other option that you can select here is e-file, and I'm going to bypass that for just one moment and talk about our fatal errors, report warnings, and items for review. So the first thing that I want to mention here is that these options are going to be hyperlinks. For example, I have a report warning telling me that I have an incomplete address for my filer committee. If I wanted, I can just click that hyperlink and my filer committee record, FEC party, is going to launch. And I could then enter my correct address information. I also have an item for review. And again, I can click my hyperlink and make corrections as possible. And if I had a fatal error, same thing would happen. I would have hyperlinks that I could click on. Here's what you need to know about fatal errors. You are not going to be able to file if you have fatal errors. It means the FEC is not going to accept your filing. So if you do have fatal errors, you absolutely have to fix those before you're going to be able to submit your file to the FEC. Report warnings are things that you really ought to correct before you file. You might get a request for additional information based on things that we indicate as report warnings. Um, and then you may need to file an amendment in that case. Uh, but again, these aren't the same as fatal errors. You will actually be able to file your report. You just might get a request for information from the FEC and be required to file an amendment. And then items for review are items that are more along the lines of back office is typically used to seeing transactions entered in a certain way, and we're going to let you know if a transaction isn't entered in a manner that the system is used to seeing. Uh, you can correct these or not. It's really up to you. 
So that's the difference between these three levels. Again, fatal errors you need to fix before you file. The FEC won't accept. Report warnings, we strongly suggest you correct these items for review. Uh, you can change at your discretion. You know your data uh, better than uh, our system does. So you'll know whether or not that was entered correctly. And again, if you have any questions about these, always feel free to give us a call. All right, so let's take a look at how e-filing actually happens. What I'm going to do is just click this option that says e-file, and my screen refreshes, and I can enter my e-filing password. Now, your e-filing password is something that you get from the FEC. It is not your back office pa password. It is something totally different. If you do not have an e-filing password, you can give the FEC a call. Their number is 800-424-9530. Or you can go to their website, fec.gov, and you can search for password. I do know that uh, you can fax them a request. If you go to their website, you'll be able to get a, their document uh, that you need to fill out in order to get a password. And then you can send them a request, uh, a fax, to 202-219-0667. So that password gets entered here, and then you'll enter your filer email, and your filer email is going to be the email address that will receive the uh, success or failure notification that is sent by the FEC. You can also tell back office if you want the system, if you want back office to actually remember your e-filing password. So all you need to do is click that box. And then you simply click File Now. So after you click File Now, Back Office submits your 3x to the FEC. And on this screen, after this has been submitted, you will get actually a notification of success or failure. That notification is coming from the FEC. It's actually not generated by your Back Office database. It's just receipt of information from the FEC. Every once in a while, when we're in a major filing deadline, the FEC servers get a little bit overwhelmed. And so you may actually get feedback from the FEC that says, our servers are too busy right now. And if you do get that, what you'll want to do is go to the FEC website, look up your filer committee, and see if your report was indeed filed. Um, or you can just watch for your acceptance email. Of course, if, if it is on the deadline, um, definitely you want to get in touch with the FEC or check their website to make sure that they did receive your filing rather than just waiting on receipt of that email. Um, but that is how our e-filing process actually works. Again, you simply enter your password, the email address you want to receive the uh, email notification, and again, you can tell back office to recall your password for future e-filings. So once that is done, we actually have an e-filing history report that you can take a look at. It also lives in reports, government reports. And we're going to scroll down to the section labeled utilities. And I'm going to actually talk about all three of these reports here, but I'm going to start with the e-filing history report. Now, because this is a sample database, um, I'm just going to show you, th that means e-filing hasn't occurred through here, so I'll just sh mention to you what you would see. Um, what you can do for your e-filing history report is enter a from and to date. In other words, these are the date ranges in which I submitted a filing, and I want to see filings between this date range. So you would enter your from and to date, you would click Generate, and this back office screen will refresh. And at that point, if there were any reports that had been filed in that date range, you would see the date it was filed, 
the filer ID. So if you had a database that had a couple different filing committees in it, this would show you the filing ID for, for that particular report. The agency, so let's say that you are a 3x filer who is submitting to the FEC and the FPPC. This is where you would see to which you were submitting. And then you would see a status um, like is this in progress, for example. Um, and then you're going to see the result. This is your success or failure notification that you'll see in the result column. And then you'll see filer email. So this will be the email address that was entered to receive the notification from the FEC. Please note that this is, sorry, uh, Right before date is one thing that I should have mentioned. You will see a button that says download if there's a report available for you to download. We do have to purge these reports out every six months or so. But until then, you can actually come back to this e-filing history report and download the actual report that was filed. After six months, of course, you can go to the FEC site and still view the report that was uploaded from your back office database, but this helps make it a little easier to actually see what was really filed with a certain report. So let's go back to the government reports menu, and I'm going to show you another utility that you can use called the changed transaction report. Every once in a while, you will generate a report for a certain period, and your column A totals might look great, but the column B totals might be off. When that happens, it's usually indicative of a change that's occurred to historical information. So maybe someone has deleted a transaction that was filed during a previous period, or has changed a date. Um, on a transaction so that it's hitting in a different reporting period. So what you can do here is enter the date that the previous report was filed. So let's say that we were thinking that there was a problem uh, with our year-end report, uh, that somebody had changed a, a transaction or deleted a transaction. So I would enter the actual date that my report was filed. And I would do that in the top field here. And then I would enter the close of that filing period. So essentially the to date in your criteria when you're generating your 3x. And then you would click generate. I have actually, I have a screenshot here of what this uh, report will look like. And what you'll see is that back office is giving us some potential problems. So I can see the name of the record that my potential problem is on. I can see the date of the transaction, the amount, the transaction type, and personally I think that one of the most important things on this report is the alert. So why is this transaction included in this particular report? Well, our last option here you'll see is Elizabeth Smith. This transaction was actually deleted. So that might be causing, causing our column B problem in our current report because somebody went back and deleted a transaction that has a transaction date of 9-1-2010. Maybe that's having an impact on the report we're filing uh, for the current period and is impacting the column B total. So this is a really helpful report uh, that's available to you. Again, this is the change transaction report. Now we'll go back to our government reporting menu. And the last utility that I want to show you is the report of register and government reports discrepancies. That's a mouthful. Um, a lot of times your back office register might not match what is showing up on your 3x. And that can happen if, for example, you have a Let's say you have a deposit batch that falls on 1-1-2011. One, one, 
but within that deposit batch you have transactions for 2010 that were filed during the 2010 period. That's going to impact the way that your financial register looks, but those transactions also won't be pulling on your 2011 first of the year report that you're going to file. They were included in your year end for 2010 report. So you just enter the from date and to date uh, for which you want to see possible discrepancies. I'll go back to my screenshots here. And this is how this report looks. It's going to give you a rundown of transactions that might be causing the discrepancy and, again, a description on why this discrepancy is occurring. Finally, I want to mention that if you have questions about transactions and how they need to be reported, oftentimes your best bet is absolutely to get in touch with your analyst at the FEC. They will be able to tell you where a transaction should be reported. So they'll be able to tell you what line it should be on. If you get that information and give us a call, we can tell you how to do the data entry to get that transaction to show up on that particular line. So that's usually your best course of action if you have a transaction where you aren't really sure how it should be reported or where they want to see it. So that is what I had to go over today for 3X filers. Again, if you have questions, please give us a call, 888-217-9600, or you can always send us an email, and our email address is support at completecampaigns.com. And if you give me just one moment, we'll get started on taking a look at the Form 3. Again, we're going to go over a lot of uh, similar information regarding setting up a filing committee, that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll take a look specifically at the Form 3 criteria as well. Okay, thanks for holding on, everybody. I needed to get a drink of water from my parched throat. All right, so now we are going to take a look at specific Form 3 information. So if you are filing a Form 3 for a candidate committee, uh, this information is geared towards you. I want to start out by, again, giving you our phone number and email address. The number is 888-217-9600. And our email address is support at completecampaigns.com. So we are going to go over today the creation of a filing committee and how you can link staff or candidates to your filing committee. We're also going to look at the criteria that's involved with generating a Form 3 an overview of the e-filing process, and then we're going to take a look at some utilities that will help you uh, find maybe a transaction that's been deleted or uh, find out why your register looks a little different than the report that you're actually generating. Okay, so to start, we'll take a look at creating our filer committee. This is something where both the support department and you come into play. So to create a filing committee, what you'll do is start by going to Add Search Organization. And we will enter our filer committee name or what we're going to ultimately name it here. I'm going to name this Friends of Smith. And I'm going to search for that. It doesn't exist, so I'm just going to choose Add Organization. And now 
my record already has friends of Smith. And the key here is that I'm going to choose to toggle on this option for committee. Now I can enter my committee ID number, which is a number provided to us by the FEC. And I'm going to set my committee type. Uh, because we are a candidate committee, I'm just going to leave it at the first option in our list, which is general candidate committee. And then I'm going to save my changes. Now this is where support gets involved. Give us a call or send us an email and let us know that you need this set up as a filer committee and then we will activate this as a filer committee on the back end. I already have a record that is set up as a filer committee so I'd like to launch over to that record and it is called FEC Candidate. So here's my FEC candidate record that I've already set up as a filing committee. Um, one thing that you'll see that's different from the screen we were looking at just before is that primary filing committee information is now a piece of info that we see in our general information section. And we don't have the option to select or unselect the committee box anymore. This is already set up as a filing committee. So what I'm going to do now is, because I've neglected to enter my uh, committee ID number, I'm just going to enter it here. And again, that is something that you get from the FEC. Save my changes, so now that's been saved. I've already linked my candidate to this record, as well as my treasurer. Um, let me show you. I'm going to unlink my candidate. I'm just going to delete that affiliation. Save my changes. And now I'm going to go back to Add Affiliation, choose Candidate from my drop-down, and I'm going to search for my candidate. and click search. So I have two options here. I can either just click use, which will take me to this record, or from here I can choose set candidate as candidate for FEC candidate, which is the name of my filer committee. I want to use just to take a look and make sure that I'm looking at the right record. So I look in my other information section, yes, this person has been set as a candidate. This box is toggled on. I can choose to enter office information from this drop-down. I can enter an office description. I can enter my candidate ID. And after I've confirmed that, yes, this is the person that I want, and they have the candidate information that I need, I am now going to choose Save and Set as Candidate. So that's how you associate a candidate with a record. So now I have a candidate associated here. I certainly could choose to associate some other options. Uh, maybe I want to add an affiliated committee. It's the same process that you saw me go through for adding, um, adding the candidate. All right, so now we have our filer committee set up and we are ready to generate a Form 3. To do that, you'll start by going to Reports, Government Reports. And from this screen, I just want to point out a couple of quick things to you before we actually go to the Report Generation screen. Uh, you do have an option here to actually change your committee affiliations. So if you wanted to add some additional affiliations from this screen, I need to make sure I have my correct filer committee selected. And then I can start ch choosing uh, different affiliations that I wanted to add from this drop down. But you can add these affiliations from the individual record, or I'm sorry, from the filer committee record that was set up as well. We'll just go back to our government reports menu. 
You also have an option here to change your FEC starting information. So I'm going to click that and make sure that my committee is the correct committee that's selected. First, I'm going to enter a closing date. So this is going to be the date of my last report. And then I'm going to enter what or I'm sorry, the date of the report that I want to use for my, my column B total calculations moving forward. Let me clarify that. So now what I would do after I've selected the closing date of that report is enter the column B totals from that report. And moving forward, back office will use those to calculate uh, your report. So it, it, during the same reporting um, election cycle to date period, it'll use these totals to calculate your column B totals. If this were historical information, say you had uh, something in here, your, your information was from 2003, for example, this would impact your cash on hand totals for your current reporting election cycle. So now we're going to go back to our reports menu, and I'm going to choose the Form 3. Now, I want you to notice that you actually see this option that says Install Viewer a few different times um, in the Government Reports section. This is one of the places where you see it. If you don't have the .fec viewer installed on your computer yet, you need this in order to review your reports. Um, and this is one place where you can download it. It's an executable file, so you just click Install Viewer, and BackOffice will uh, give you some prompts as far as installing this on your system. One thing to note is that the FEC has not created a viewer that works with Macs at this point. So if you're working on a Mac, you'll need to have a virtual PC environment if you need to view your FEC reports. And again, that is just something that the FEC hasn't developed at this point. Um, in the report criteria section, is where you will enter the report type that you're working with. So you'll see that there are some different options here. We're going to choose the year end. We also have an area where we can tell back office how we want to calculate 11AI column B. So you do have a tool tip here. Whenever you see these perforated uh, lines underneath an option in back office, it means that there's a tool tip associated with this field. So here we can see some information that back office is giving us about this particular option. So the first option in this drop down is to use a hand entered amount. Oops. And I should be getting a pop-up, or I'm sorry, a new field that would allow me to enter that hand entered amount. Our next option is to leave blank. That's just going to set this at zero for us. And then based on previous e-filing is actually going to scrape the FEC um, website and grab your previous amount from there. If you have not e-filed previously, you don't want to use this option until you have submitted with an e-file. You can choose your current election from this current election drop-down, and then you can actually choose a sort option. You'll see that we have random, date, and name. This also gives us a tool tip here, and it's basically just telling us that this will allow us to dictate how we want uh, itemization records to be sorted on the Form 3. So if it's easier for you to review your Form 3 with things in alphabetical order, you can choose to sort this by name. If it's easier for you to do it by date, you can choose date, or you can always choose random. If you are filing an amendment, you'll select that here. 
And then you can also choose to have an optional memo. This is different than, say, the Form 99 that you can file or the memo text form uh, that you can file through your back office database. This is just some information that's going to show up on the second page of your Form 3. And you just simply enter it here, and it'll generate on your report for you. We then, on the right-hand side, have our report dates. The from and to date are your reporting period. This is the date range that is going to itemize on your report. So this is essentially column A. Then you have your previous general election date. This is the start of your election cycle. The election cycle starts the day after your last general election. So you need to enter that date so that back office knows to start when to start calculating your election cycle to date totals. General election date dictates the end of the election cycle. So it's whenever your next general election is going to occur. And then the current election date is just your next upcoming election. This might be a primary. It might, it might be the, the next general election date, uh, as the case may be. But it's just whatever your, your next upcoming election is. These are strictly examples. So please, if you're generating a year-end report in the future, um, just note that these are example dates. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're using the correct from and to date and the correct election dates. Uh, again, these are examples. And these all have tooltips tied to them. So if you just hover your mouse over these options, you'll be able to get some additional information. And as always, you can give us a call or send us an email, and we'd be happy to go over these in more detail with you. Then we have our report options. Uh, these are all options that you can toggle on or off uh, as the case may be. Um, these are up to you to determine if you want them on. For example, we have an option to itemize all transactions on Schedule A. So the FEC has thresholding rules in place. If you have a contributor that has not given over $200 for the election cycle, you don't need to itemize those. After 200, you do need to itemize those people. But every once in a while, you might decide that you want to provide additional information and itemize everyone. This is where you can dictate that. So you would just choose to this option, check that box, and now every transaction that's a, a contribution or a transaction on Schedule A even if it's under thresholding, is going to itemize on your report. Uh, let's see. All of these have tool tips associated with them. So as always, you can just hover your mouse over them and get some further information. The other thing that I specifically want to point out to you here is autofill information requested. So this is going to autofill for people where you don't have occupation and employer. Uh, it'll show information requested. You do, however, want to make sure that you have actually requested that information. But this will just save you from having to type it into each individual record where you don't have that info. You can also indicate a change of address if this report is going to include a change of address for the committee. And then on the right, we have the, an area where we can enter the treasurer's signature. So you would just enter that here. And I'll enter mine. Actually, I won't, so I'll show you the fatal error that will come up if I haven't entered that information. So now we can click Generate. And Back Office is now looking at the Back Office database, the information that you've entered for transaction, transactions based on the report dates that have been entered. And now we have generated our report. One option that we see up here is to download. I'm going to open this. And now you can see that we have generated our Form 3.
our Form 3 is letting us know that this was our year end. It's giving us our date range for this particular report. And then it is going into our column A and column B totals. So that's how you actually generate your report. So now, let's say that we looked at our report and realized that our date range was incorrect. From this screen, what you can do is just click Redo, and it'll launch you back to that report criteria screen that we were just looking at. You also have another opportunity to install the .fec viewer, so you can do that here. And you also have an option to e-file. I'm going to bypass that for just one brief moment and talk about the fatal errors, report warnings, and items for review that you see on this screen. So we do have one fatal error because I did not enter the treasurer name when I generated this. If I were to click this error, this is just a hyperlink and it's going to launch me back to the report screen, the report criteria screen so that I can enter that information and then regenerate my report. Fatal errors are showstoppers. You are not going to be able to file your FEC report if you have a fatal error. So just be aware of that. They have to be fixed. We then have some report warnings. These, you can file your Form 3 with a report warning, but if you don't fix the report warning, it may mean that you're going to get a request for additional information from the FEC and that you might need to file an amendment. So we suggest that you do correct these. Um, just note that these also are hyperlinks, so I can click uh, my first option. Here, it's telling me that my filing committee address is wrong or incomplete. So I clicked that report warning. I am now looking at my record that is causing that warning. And if I wanted, I could enter my address right now. Then we have items for review. So these items for review are just a heads up from back office, essentially saying we see, we're seeing something that's a little different than what we're used to seeing, and you might want to take a look at it. It may or may not cause you to get a letter from the FEC asking for additional information, um, so you need to use your discretion on whether or not you were correct in your data entry, or maybe it does need to be changed. And of course, you can definitely give us a call and ask us questions about any of these options that you see come up here, whether you have a fatal error, a report warning, or an item for review. So once we've gone over these, and let's say that I had fixed my fatal error and regenerated my report so I don't have any more fatal errors, I'm going to click e-file. And my screen refreshes, and this is where I can enter my e-filing password and my filer email. So your e-filing password is different from your back office password. This is a password that you have received from the FEC. If you do not have an e-filing password, you can go to fec.gov and search for e-filing password. They do have a document that you can fill out and fax to them at 202-219-0674. If you have questions from, uh, for them about getting that e-filing password, the FEC number is 1-800-242-9530. But again, this is separate from your back office password, and it's a password that's given to you by the FEC. The filer email is the email address that's going to receive the notification of success or failure if that's what happens when you file your report. So this is the email address that will receive that. Um, you can change this. And then you can also tell back office if you want it to remember your e-filing password by just checking this box. And then you click File Now and back office will submit your report to the FEC. After a couple moments, after you've clicked File Now, you will get a pop-up notification that will let you know whether your report was 
accepted or rejected. This is actually not a notification from back office itself per se. It's a notification that you are seeing that's coming from the FEC. And that's important because every once in a while the FEC servers are very busy if it's a heavy filing deadline. And you might get a notification basically saying FEC servers are too busy, we're not getting a response back from them. What you're going to want to do is check the FEC site to see if your report has been accepted by them. You'll also want to check your email and watch for the notification that you should be receiving from them. But what I'll tell you is that if you are close to the actual filing deadline, give them a call. Find out if they have received your, your file. Um, you don't want to leave that up to chance. So now that the e-filing is done, I'm going to show you a couple of utilities that might help you solve problems that come up. So first of all, we'll just go back to reports, government reports. And I'm going to scroll way down to the bottom of this screen. Sorry, I have a few different filer committees set up in this sample database, so you see a, a few different options here. Um, what we're going to do is take a look at this utility section. So first, let's take a look at the e-filing history report. And this is where you can go to find reports that have been e-filed through back office. We actually keep a downloadable copy for you of that report for six months. After six months, you'll want to go to the FEC site and actually view that, that report. Otherwise, you can just go to reports, government reports, and choose the e-filing history report to take a look at it here. E-file dates. This is the date range uh, in which you believe you filed your report. So you would enter the date range that you want to search and then click generate. Because this is a sample database, I haven't e-filed through here. So please just know that if you did get results for your e-filing history, if you could download a version to review, again, this would be the actual report that was filed through back office, there would be a, a gray button that says download that you could click just to the left of date. Date is going to be the date that it was filed. You'll also see your filer ID, the agency, status, you'll also see result. Was this accepted, was, you know, successful, or was it rejected? And then you also see the filer email, and that is the email that received the e-filing notification. So this is a helpful tool if you want to see a report that's been previously filed through back office. So I'm going to click back to government reports and go back down to utilities. Another report that can be very helpful is the changed transaction report. So I'm going to click the changed transaction report. And this is a report that you can run. Let's say you've generated a report and your column A totals look great. They look spot on. But column B isn't calculating correctly based on the report that you last generated um, and filed through back office. Odds are that a transaction has been changed in a reporting period that was previously reported. And this report is going to help you find that transaction. So what you need in order to generate this report is the date that that report was filed and the close of that filing period. So if you think back to the report criteria screen, um, how you had the from date and the to date, the close of the previous filing period is that to date. And then you would click Generate. I have some examples that I want to show you of how this report will look. Let's see. My system is fighting me here. Sorry about that. Okay, so here is the change tra a version of the change transaction report. And you'll see what we are finding here is that we did have some transactions that were changed. Uh, we had some transactions that had amount changes. This one had a reporting code that was changed. Um, this one was entered into the database after a f the filing period that it impacts. 
let's see here is a possible um, problem. This is a transaction that was deleted. So this alert column is letting us know what the problem associated with it m with the transaction might be. So this is just a good place to start looking if your column B totals seem to be off for your transaction. I'm sorry, for your form three. So let's take a look at one other utility that we have here. We also have a utility called the Report of Register and Government Report Discrepancies. So that is a whole lot of title for a report that's just going to show you differences between your register and what's disclosing on your report. So every once in a while you might have, let's say, a deposit batch that has a date on it that falls outside of a reporting period. So your register might look a little bit different from your Form 3 that you're generating, and this report's going to help you identify why it looks different. So I also have a screenshot we can look, up, look at of why this might look different. This is the way this report would look. And it's also giving us a description related to transactions that might be causing the discrepancy between the register and your report. So just keep in mind that that's a, a utility that's available to you as well. And those are the items that I had to go over today related to filing a Form 3. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. The number here is 888-217-9600, and our email address is support at completecampaigns.com. I want to thank you for your time today, and I look forward to having another webinar with you soon. Thanks. Bye.